Hi everyone, Stepan here. In this video I'm going to show you a very painful game. Uh, I faced uh, a woman I am, Anna Verke, uh, in the Karo Khan. And she played a peace sacrifice, which I knew, which I was prepared for, which I analyzed extensively and thought, okay, I, I'm, I'm great with this one. If, if anybody goes for this, it should be an easy draw if they know what they are doing or, or I win the game. And I should say that after having drawn in round four, uh, which was a morning round, uh, I had a whole day to prepare for, for next day because round five was in the morning uh, on, on day four of the tournament. And funnily enough, I actually had looked at this sacrifice again that day and the next morning actually. So I thought, okay, uh, she plays the Pano all the time. Maybe we get into this. I want to be prepared. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we get the Panov, and if you play knight f6 and knight c6, then white has the option uh, to play several things. One of them is knight to f3. Now, the principled move is bishop to g4. And in, in this position, white basically has to go for this forced line, which I've played once in a tournament game, and, and I won the game, so she was aware of that. So cd, knight d, queen b3, bishop f3, gf, e6, queen b7, knight d4, bishop b5, takes, queen c6. Okay, in this position, black's best move is king to e7. White doesn't take the knight straight away to misplace the king. And here, uh, the most common move is queen takes knight, where black could block with the queen, uh, trade off all the pieces, or black could take on c3, again, trading off most of the pieces. The peace sacrifice, uh, first introduced, I believe, by Alexander Grischuk in 2016 in his game against Vidit, is actually very strong. And if you are unprepared for it, then you, you could lose. And I first became aware of the sacrifice in a Blitz game. Someone played it against me, I got destroyed in about 15 moves once the sacrifice was played. <clears throat> and the sacrifice is queen c5 check. So, obviously, uh, you could go knight d6, saving your piece. That's the piece sacrifice. Uh, in the game Grishchuk with it, with it actually went queen e8, uh, king e8, excuse me, going into the... transposing back into the main lines. And, and Grishchuk ended up winning the game. I was prepared for queen c5, so I played knight d6 instantly. And she was kind of upset, I could see it, that, that I, I played all, all of my moves instantly, like the next five or six moves. So, what, what's the point? Well, you play uh, knight d5 check, and if if black is afraid, black could go king d7, which should lead to a slightly better endgame for black. But uh, if you know what you're doing, then you can actually stay up a piece and force white into a drawn, uh, drawn position. So you take the knight, uh, white castles, and this, I, I was prepared for all of this. I actually had it on the board the morning of the game, like uh, on an actual board. I was looking at this and thinking, okay, what if she plays this? What if she doesn't play the moves I was prepared for? And I thought I knew everything. Okay, so, so the way to refute this is queen c8, queen takes d5 and queen to b7. Now, queen e5 is the only move. You play king d7. And in this position, the best way to play, which she didn't do, is rook to d1. And you go rook e8, there you go queen f5 check, you go rook e6, queen f7 check, bishop to e7, bishop to g5, rook to e8, and now rook takes d6 is the fourth line. Rook takes d6, rook e1, and the best move is rook to g6, forcing an, a, a trade and, and going into a drawn game. After rook e7, rook e7, queen takes e7, king c6, this is a draw. Uh, white has to give perpetual check, otherwise uh, you just lose the bishop and you, you're a rook down for two pawns. So this is what I was prepared for the most, and I know that this is 26 moves of theory, or theory, 26 moves of preparation, but I thought this was the best she had. Instead, she deviated, actually giving me a chance to be better. She played bishop f4. And I knew that this was a mistake. Uh, I wasn't really sure 
uh, how to punish it, but I punished it correctly and I, I got the winning position. Let me show you what happened. I played rook e8, queen to d4, rook to e6, rook f to d1. And in this position, I played bishop to e7. I, I continued the same way I would have had she played the, the critical line. There's actually a very interesting prophylactic move, which I, after this game finished, sorry for the spoiler, but I was so devastated that I, it was really hard for me to pick myself up and to continue playing in the afternoon. And I, I desperately wanted to analyze this game and to see where I went wrong. I forced myself not to do it during the tournament because whatever my conclusion was, I knew it would be painful because I knew it, I had to be winning. There's a very, very simple move here, and that's pawn to a6. And this actually restricts white's options. Uh, it, it prevents queen a4 check. Uh, of course, I could meet queen a4 check with queen b5. And this means that after a6, uh, I have enough time to, to finish my development. Go bishop e7, go rook d8, or rook b8, or rook c8, whatever. Instead, I thought, okay, if she plays queen a4, I'm going to play queen c6, give up my a7 pawn, and then finish my development. So I played bishop e7, she played queen a4 check, and now I had a long think. Uh, I actually was looking for alternatives to, to, to queen c6. One thing that's clear straight away is that king c8 loses, because after rook a c1, I go king b8, and then she just goes rook c3, and that should be about it. I mean, rook b3 is coming. Even if I play something like king a8, this is far too scary. Uh, it's just too many pieces coming in. Uh, eventually, she's going to double take, and then play rook c1 and have a, have a better game. Uh, one interesting option, which I'd actually spent 15 minutes calculating during the game as an alternative to, to queen c6 is king to d8. And the, the reasoning behind king d8 is twofold. Firstly, rook c1 doesn't come with check. Secondly, I've got queen d7 as a resource. So, for example, rook to d4, which the engine gives us the best move. I can always throw in rook g6 and force the bishop to g3. Now I go queen d7, and once the queen retreats, I can just start pressing. So h5. Okay, if queen b8, then black should be winning after, after queen to c8, because if we trade queens, then obviously I'm a piece up. If we don't trade queens, then obviously I, I go h4. There are no more checks. But I wasn't sure about it, so I went queen c6, which I thought was the safest. And the move is fine, it's just that the position should be about equal. She took on a7, I went queen c7. Uh, this isn't a draw offer. It's basically saying let's trade queens and I win. Queen a6, of course, queen c6. I want to force the queen out. Again, if she goes uh, queen a7, then I do repeat. And fine, I mean, uh, a draw is okay. I knew that the position should be equal. But she played queen d3. And now she's losing. And I thought that this was impossible. I thought she was just dead lost. The engine gives this as minus 4. So it is more than a piece. And I played rook d8. Usually when a game goes wrong during a tournament, I spend most of my waking hours going over it in my head unintentionally. I just do it. So when I was in the shower that afternoon, I kept thinking, okay, I should have played rook b8. I think rook b8 wins. I think rook b8 is better than rook d8. And I started analyzing all the lines. Then I just forced myself, again, not to do it during the tournament. The idea behind rook b8 instead of rook d8 is that I'm preventing the only asset she has in this position. And that's the two best pawns on the queen side. Uh, after an extensive analysis when I came back home, uh, by myself and with the engine, uh, I concluded that rook d8 is actually a better move than rook b8. And I'll show you why. So rook b8 was fine, but rook d8, what I played, was actually better. Okay, so rook d8. She plays b4, fine. Okay, uh, that's... I have to admit that I wasn't aware, or I didn't think about how strong these pawns are going to be. But still, when she played b4, I was aware of it. Okay, so I threw in rook g6. Bishop g3, and I played king e8. Okay, now everything is unpinned, everything is fine. Uh, she played a4. And now there is a simple win. A, a fairly simple win, which I, I didn't see. 
Okay, so you go h5 first. So she either has to go h4, which I can just take, uh, or she has to move the king. So let's say king h1. And now the winning idea is knight c4. And there is no way to defend against this. Uh, the queen is attacked. The rooks are about to be traded off. Uh, the engine gives queen e4 as the best move. If queen c3 is played, for example, which seems reasonable, not trading queens off, then rook d1, rook d1, and h4. And once bishop f4 is played, then queen a4, and she cannot take the knight. So this would have been a simple win. What I thought was clever and the better was queen c4. Now, this move is still winning. Uh, d d don't get me wrong, it's about minus 2 for black, but it's not as simple. So again, sh she played b5, I took on d3, rook takes d3. And in this position, again, th there are a couple of simpler wins for black. I played knight c4, which is okay. My idea was to blockade on the dark squares. Had I played rook a8, I would have had a much simpler game. Uh, again, rook b3 should be the best move, and then I just blockade with rook a5. Uh, this pawn isn't going anywhere. Uh, I, I can pick it up several different ways. Unless she can connect on the dark squares, I should be able to round up the pawns. Also, I still have a threat to win the bishop. But I played knight c4. She played rook c3. And now I should mention that bishop f6 doesn't work. I just lose a piece uh, because rook check. So if bishop f6, rook e1, knight e5, f4, I don't have a way to, to save my piece. The best move, which I didn't play, was rook to d4. And now if a5, I have bishop b4. If not a5, then, then what? I mean, this pawn cannot move, this pawn cannot move. Uh, really hard to suggest something. Okay, instead I went knight, e knight a5, which was my idea. Okay, uh, she went rook b1, and I thought this, what I was about to do, was, was a great idea. I played bishop h4. And I thought, okay, if I trade off the bishops, there's no way she, she will have enough pressure with the pawns. That's partially true, and the position should be equal, but it's much trickier now. Okay, she went b6, I took on g3, hg3. And here, again, I, I made a mistake. I played rook b8, which is a move I was intending to play all along. Uh, I should have played rook c6. And after rook e3 check, I just go king d7 and get my king closer to the queen side. And this is better for black. Should be around equal if you turn on the engine, but as opposed to what happened in the game, it's a position in which white could go wrong. It's very hard for black to go wrong. For example, rook b5, knight b7, a5, rook c5. Rook d3 check, king c6. Rook c5, king c5, rook c3. There's just no way white is holding this. Uh, there's just no way. I mean, regardless of what the engine says, it's very hard for a human to, to save these two pawns. And if the two pawns fall, then Obviously, it's a winning endgame. Uh, instead, I went rook b8, which is not good. Uh, again, the position is equal, but as opposed to the previous position, which I showed you, this one is much easier to play for white. Rook b5, knight b7, rook c7. You can see that there's a huge difference now. Rook d6, uh, and I wanted to get behind the a pawn, so I want to go rook d1, rook a1, rook e5 check, king f8. Uh, rook e7. I had all of this worked out, so it, it's still okay. Rook d1, king g2, knight d8, a5, rook a1. And I thought everything was fine. Everything is fine. It is fine, but it's harder to play for black. She went rook e5, uh, defending the pawn. I went knight b7. She went rook e7, I went knight d8. She went rook e5, I, I went knight b7. And now she went rook f5, and I blundered and lost. Uh, so, if I go knight d8, what can she do? Uh, if she repeats with, with, with rook e5, then I just go knight b7. If she plays rook d5, 
I can just go 96 and again there's no way for her to make progress both pawns are hanging and I'm not hanging mate because d8 is defended in any case knight d8 was just a simple repetition there's no way for her to make progress instead I went f6 and this is now game over which I was completely unaware of uh, why is it so well she plays rook d5 uh, and after rook d5 obviously I'm not defending the g7 pawn so, for example, if I play knight takes pawn, then rook dd7, and my knight is not coming back to d8. Uh, so, let's say rook b1 takes, and this is a simple win for white. Eventually, she's going to dominate me and try to checkmate me. Um, this is about plus 4, plus 5, 5 for white. What I thought was the refutation of this was rook takes. Okay, and now after rook d to d7, I thought, my position is great. And I played knight d8. And I thought, okay, if she takes there, well, so what, what's the problem? There's a huge problem. There's a... This f6 was such a blunder and such a simple tactical win for, for white that when she played her next move, or two moves later I, I was shocked and devastated and, and she played b7 and I thought okay rook b5 and then she plays rook c8 and I I I don't know what was going through my head I almost threw up I think I, I don't know this was I, I just completely missed the main idea behind this and that's to play rook c8 obviously now I have to resign uh, and I did resign this is just it's just lost there's nothing I can do I'm, I'm losing everything uh, I remember that afternoon meeting one of the arbiters in the hotel lobby and he says to me uh, while passing by I, I want to trade a score sheet for a thermos bottle so I, I never did this before but I actually took the original score sheet which you're supposed to give to the arbiter and left the copy on the table and actually le left my water bottle next to the table, which I just I just signed the score sheet and ran away. I, I, it took me about five hours to compose myself. The worst thing is, there's a game in the afternoon. So you have to play well in the afternoon. And once you lose, you get paired down. So not only did I lose a game that I should have won and then later should have held, but I actually have to play a lower rated opponent in the afternoon, which is just, uh, just want to go home and, and cry. So yeah, uh, she, she didn't play the sacrifice well. I had a winning position. I had a few simple wins. I have to admit that I didn't invest enough time. I should have invested more time, way more time. Uh, I spent a long time thinking after Queen A4 check. And I think this was my biggest think of the game. And I didn't find King D8, or I did find it, but I misjudged it. Had I played King D8, it would have been just a simple game, because she doesn't have two connected past pawns. Uh, so yeah, this was tough. I mean, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. Uh, I, I did analyze the game correctly, and the next time this happens, I'm going to win. Or I'm going to draw if they go for the first draw. You have to pay for your lessons. And in my case, I, I pay with, I don't know, being upset. Ugh. Okay, uh, so yeah, th this was the round five game. Needless to say that I I didn't feel well before, before round six, which I'll show you tomorrow. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.